But the, the difference from learning from like some black belt guy that's running a gym versus like, you know, the elite black belts, the elite top fighters is like Glover Teixeira would say like, well, if you were going to a normal gym, be eight or 10 years. And I said that to Frank and Frank said, no, it'd be 10 years. Like what I did in two years, it'd take 10 years at a normal gym, maybe. Maybe, and you know, you don't have 10 years, I'd be eight years older than I am. So I'd be 52 instead of 44. You don't have that time. You can't learn at that pace. Your, time, your life goes by, you know? The results aren't gonna be there, so. Yeah, I learned, it's a lot of those little things that. Uh... If you don't have a million dollars yet, you're living a much lesser life than what could be easily available to you with the right guidance. My head coach has freed up a few spots in his calendar to hold one-on-one -on -one strategy calls with the highest quality applicants. If you're doing well already, and you're looking to accelerate your momentum and do even better, click the link in the description now and apply for your strategy session. More at the end of this video. We touched on this yesterday. Not only do you not have to be perfect, if, if you could just be a little less you know, ir irrational, a little less crazy and a little less irrational than the, all, the, all the other crazy people, um, you know, that's a huge advantage. It just nobody wants to do that. Everybody's so so uh, um, gripped by their emotions and their little feelings that they can't really think well. And and you know, young people today, some of us were still you know raised with the idea that it's it's good to be a critical thinker, or or good to have independent thought. And young people today are being totally brainwashed that, you know, just follow the rules, follow the the structure, trust the government, uh, you know. Trust the experts. So, uh, the experts are a joke. Eugene Fama is one of the experts. <laughs> Eugene Fama is maybe the, you know the, the the most cited expert on that specific topic. Uh, if you believed in efficient, if you believe that you couldn't make any uh, abnormally high return or you can't beat the market, the market's average. I mean, that's all it should take to understand. Can you beat the market? Is like the market is the average of what's going on in the economy. So. 50% of people participating should be doing, you know, some increment better than that. So how, how, this is a Nobel Prize winner? The, the whole thing has been crazy to me to look at this and like, this is like a saint at the school. This is like a holy person that like, you know, I, I should, in, in their little academic universe, it's like I should be damned for, to, you know, uh, hell for eternity for talking bad about St. Fama or something, you know? But it's a total joke. There's no reason Simon can't be at $200. You think through cap rates, um, there's no reason, I, I think 200, 225, something like that. It could be up another 50%. But um, I agree with the other ones that Nordstrom can be more than a double, Macy's can be more than a double, Mace Rich can be more than a double. I think, you know, those are the three things that, that I own that I think have the most upside. Simon can go up 50%, you know, Energy transfer could be twenty dollars, something like that. But uh, those other ones can be, you know, more than double from where they're currently at. You know, maybe triple, but more than double. I totally agree. Yes, sir. I know that one thing that I heard Carrie uh, say that I really liked was just the framing of you got like two hundred failures, but after those two hundred you'd get the result that you desired. It's like, it wouldn't even be a question of whether to do it or not, right? What's your first year in jujitsu feel like, Mark? You're, you're a big guy. Is that a fun time? Uh, no, like there's the guillotine chokes and <laughs> swallow food for the next several days. Yeah. Uh, Is it fun getting like bullied by smaller guys? No, but it's very instructional. And, and when someone's inside control and, and they, they feel many magnitudes heavier than, than what they actually are. Yeah. The MMA or you know, the jujitsu training is like, you know, for, you know, Mark's a big guy. I'm a big guy. For the first six months, you just get like, you know, bullied by people that are smaller than you. And it just kind of sucks. It's shocking their skill sets a lot. Yeah. And, and I'm training at a much lower level. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> Even the difference of someone being a top mount and then like heavy hits when they've got their hooks in, and how that just dramatically changes the whole situation. I'm fascinated, yeah. I'm fascinated by all of them. Yeah, it's, uh, I, don't know, I, I find it interesting, and uh, for numerous reasons, that it's been good for my fitness. It's good, you know, it's, uh, a problem-solving exercise, and uh, you know, a lot of it is intellectual. You, you, 
the people that are really good at that, you know, you can't really be a dummy. You, you have to have a lot, a lot, a lot of time on the mats and uh, be able to think, you know, to make, not, not only think of like, well, what do I do here, but then you have to anticipate, well, if I do this, my opponent does that, my opponent does that, then I got to do this and da, da, da. So I got to make my opponent think that I'm going to do this, but actually I'm going to do that. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, if I can't get the submission from there, I can at least get a sweep and <laughs> so there's a, a whole lot of uh, strategy and thinking in that that people don't understand unless they did it. But um, but point being, the first couple months is just what you said is like it's just I mean the first half a year is just that you just get bullied and abused by in, in my case or Mark's case by people that are smaller than you and. Um, at some point, you ask yourself, like, like, what am I doing? Like, why, why am I doing this? Like, what the? F yeah, I, 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 nothing else I can say about it. But the the learning curve of training with like normal people that are, you know, maybe are competent, that maybe have a black belt in whatever in, in uh, jiu jitsu or they're high level Muay Thai people, or it's, it's no disrespect to them that they're certainly way above average. And that's not that you couldn't learn from those people, but the, the difference from learning from like some black belt guy that's running a gym versus like you know the elite black belts, the elite top fighters is like, many of them tell me, you know, uh, Glover Teixeira would say like, well, if you were going to a normal gym, be eight or 10 years. And I said that to Frank and Frank said, no, it'd be 10 years. Like, what I did in two years, it'd take 10 years at a normal gym, maybe, maybe. And you know, you don't have 10 years, I'd be eight years older than I am. So I'd be 52 instead of 44. So you don't have that time. You can't learn at that pace. Your, time, your life goes by, you know? <clears throat> the results aren't going to be there. So, yeah, I learned it's a lot of those little things that, uh, I mean, just changing a couple of steps in your footwork or, you know, creating that extra pendulum step or um, even that little back step that we were doing and, and, and then, you know, the elbows or throwing across or elbow, there's a lot more force in that where, you know, we're, we're hitting a, that bag weighs 190 something pounds, it's almost 200 pounds. Picking that bag up and like like jarring it harshly. Like if I kick a guy, the way I kick that bag, if I kick a guy in the in his side, it's like, ugh. it's you know, it's two or three broken ribs and he's gonna have a bad time for a little while, you know. Yeah. Anyway, the the I guess two points I'd make from this is like uh, in entrepreneurship, you're gonna get around like that. That you're, you're gonna get abused and abused and feel like idiot and feel incompetent because you are and uh, then feel gradients of less incompetency and someday you might feel competent if you if you don't give up first um, you probably feel pretty good because you're actually getting some results later and if you really stick that out then you can get to that you know the exponential rising of results for a period of time and then you can take that money and start investing in it <clears throat> and start getting another exponential gain in those investments over time and that's where the spot you want to be Almost everybody's going to give up, you know, in those frustrated moments, and you know, while they're a white belt or blue belt, or in those first couple hundred reps that you're talking about of like, you know, rejection, rejection. People don't like to to have that rejection. So, um, yeah, I mean, think about this. It's like a noob. There's a. I, I mean this in a very sincere way, but like. Would any of you guys feel a little intimidated? You got to go train with like me and Frank Muir, or like me and Jake Shields. <laughs> it's like, uh, but you know, he he shows up and actually makes you know he's he's coachable. He's smart. His brain works good. He's smart. He's coachable. Follows instructions well. Um, it's not argumentative. We'll listen to his opinion of like, well, how were you trained to do this previously? So he's articulate. He can ex just describe well the way that I've been shown in the past is to do this, 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 that where so-and-so showed me to do it like this or that. And you know, we, I think you'd agree that we try to be very cooperative to be like, you know, well, you know, try it this way. Or you know, see if this, this, this isn't more effective than that, that, that. And uh, it seems to me you catch on to things pretty quickly. Um, but, but there's a little bit of, you know, of, he's in no danger of being harmed, but there's a little bit of bravery there in the sense of uh, he's not coming up thinking he's gonna, he's not showing up thinking he's gonna about me and Frank or something, or, or me and Jake. <laughs> and, you know, he's putting himself in a little bit of a psychologically vulnerable. He's not going to get hurt with us. Neither one of us are going to try to hurt the guy at all. So he's, he's about almost no chance that you're going to get hurt unless you do something really bizarre yourself and squirm around and twist your own back up or something weird, you know? Um, 
but but there, that's a vulnerable thing to you're going to go into a room with you know me and some killer um and you know subject himself to hours you know three three and a half four hours of uh of grappling uh so i think that's pretty cool so i like it i respect that you're making the effort to do that and you learn a lot in those sessions uh it's, it's really satisfying to pull that off on people have, like, no idea yeah, so you you go back to the gym and go up the guys <laughs> yeah. I, get, I get those children the old women <laughs> he got revenge on those old women. <laughs> so you go back to the gym and fuck up the, the children. <laughs> you fuck up some of the men as well, I hope. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> Happy to hear that. So think about you. So you spent, you know, I don't know, seven hours on the mats with us. Uh, so far, and I, I know you're coming over again in the near future. So I spent, you know, uh, 70, 900, maybe 1,800 hours like that, 17, 18, 1,900 hours training one on one with those people. So imagine then some internet hater will be like, you don't know anything. <laughs> Imagine spending, you know, something like 1,800 hours one-on-one -on -one with those people, sometimes two-on-one, -on -one, sometimes three-on-one, you know, two or three of them with me, and then saying, like, you know, you don't know anything. But, uh, wow. <laughs> the Internet's a hell of a thing. The Internet's a hell of a thing. You watch this video all the way through, and that tells me you're dedicated to learning more and earning far above average outcomes in your life. Congratulations for that. But now it's time to take action. If you could have earned those results by yourself, you would have done it already. My head coach has opened up a few spots on his high demand calendar for an in-person one-on-one strategy session to help you. On this call, we'll give you the pragmatic advice that you can implement tonight to get laser focused on the right metrics and leave mediocrity far behind in your past. Click that link right now in the description below and apply for your call immediately. Do it now.